All righty, we're going to do a video, a real quick one. Yeah, I'm like, do I have any birds, things in my hair or anything super crazy? You know, when you go to move the hose around and you come back in the house sometimes and you're like, oh, what's that? <laughs> you got like some extra, extra nature following you indoors. <laughs> So, yeah, everything, yeah, most people look in the mirror before they go live or before they record a video, and I'm sitting here like, well, we got to do this work already, because uh, there's just so many things that always seem to happen all at once. A lot of actions, a lot of projects, a lot of tasks all at once. I'm recording this on the day that we have Mars entering Virgo. Yeah. Mars entering the sign of Virgo. And that's really important, right? All of a sudden there's a lot of, um, something may have changed up or there's some sort of a new thing within our routine. Mars. Mars is a action thing, right? It's like with our body, we're going to be doing something. And Virgo is all about projects and tasks and calendars and scheduling and organizing and creating order within madness, right? Seeing the big picture and seeing all the little bits and pieces all scattered about and like, well, wait a minute, this should go here and this should go here and this goes up there and that goes there. And then kind of seeing how all of that together can make something function better, function, functionality, big Virgo thing. Like if you're going to give me something, it better have a purpose. It better have a use usefulness. It better serve a purpose. Serve. These are all Virgo keywords, right? And so we got Mars and Virgo. So um, this week, wait, let me see if the, if the lighting is all good. Are we good on lighting? Is that better? I'm probably gonna have to knock it down a notch when I put the map on because I want you guys to see the map. I want you to be able to you know, for anybody who's new to get used to seeing the symbols with the words that I'm using, you know, the pictures, the glyphs, symbols, all the same thing. And for people who are new, a whole lot of new people came in. Um, I mean, we're at a steady pace, but it seems like this past weekend, some newcomers. And so that's wonderful. Welcome aboard. Welcome to all astrology. My name is G. And every Saturday night we do a live and it's 9 p.m. Central Daylight Time because that's where I'm at. So adjust for the time zone that you live in. We get people from Germany, Australia, the UK, the United States, sometimes South America, Canada, Romania, Australia. Did I already say Australia? Um, South Africa and other parts of Africa. I've got folks from West Side of Africa. Like, there's people all over the world. So no matter where you're from, what language you speak, and I'm sorry, I suck at languages. English is the only language that I was ever proficient at. Um, but anyway, come on in and see what's happening. Beam on up into the star room every Saturday at 9 p.m. So let's get to this chart. And by the way, if you don't have your chart, get a chart. Just comment to me down below the video and we will take care of you. We'll get a chart to you. And it will look like the chart that I'm about to show. Meaning, meaning, here, I'll give you an example. Let's just slam this baby up here real quick. Um, if you take a look at this chart, there it is, okay? Every time I put a chart up, I hear that music. Remember, dude, back in the day? Okay, now I'm getting warm. I should have turned a fan on. Um, remember, dude, back in the day, and maybe they still do it. I don't know what his name was. I don't know. You know, this was like back in the seventies. Like would remember like the big extravagant Miss America pageants or Miss universe. Maybe they're still on television. I don't watch TV, so I have no idea. But anyhow, when the winner, like when it came down to that final contestant, wouldn't somebody sing like there she is. Right. I'm such an astrology geek that when I throw up an astrology chart, that's what the song, that's the music I hear. There she is, like the chart of the moment. So yes, I am a bona fide astrology geek. And this chart system, let me get some, some, yeah. So here, yep, I have a cursor on here. There's my number eight, just to show you where I'm at. This chart system 
if you get your own chart, if it's the chart that I send you, it will match this system. Same color glyphs, everything, same same shapes on the glyphs. Sometimes they're different. And I'm crazy, so I do a lot of glyphs, right? So if you're a person who's into the details and you want to see more, or you look at your chart and you're like, what's with all this empty stuff? I know there's more here, right? There is. There is. Like, this is a chart of a moment. And look how much stuff there is, right? So just comment below and I'll take care of you in any way that I can. All right. Now you'd see the date. Uh, let's go big. The date is July 10th. So this is going to be for the week of July 10th. All right. Uh, seven days from now, we have the new moon. There's a couple of videos up on the channel. If you haven't seen them, go check them out. All right. Enough of the channel business. Let's get down to this business. We're looking at Mars. We're looking for Mars. So what's G going to do? I'm going to change my color real quick and I'm going to point out Mars. There's Mars. Yep. The circle with the arrow. That's Mars. And then Venus right there. Right. So Mars and Venus are now in two different signs for the folks who are trying to get a love connection happening when Venus and Mars are in Leo. Uh, some people were thinking and some people were like, oh my God, when is it ever going to happen? Or considering people past loves, right? Venus is going to be retrograding very soon here because it's she's already at 26, right? 25, 58, technically 26. So we know that when Venus gets to 28, almost 29, 29, right? 28 degrees, she stands still and then retrogrades all the way back to 12 degrees in the sign of Leo, romance, children, fun, sports, creative stuff, right? Art, uh, theater, entertainment, uh, political figures, um, not even political, I meant to say public figures, uh, influencers, people who can be dramatic, who can sway the emotions of the public, public figures, okay? So, there's a lot of uh, videos about the Venus retrograde. You want to find out what house number it's in for you. This is house number two in this chart. And remember, this is just a chart of the moment. So the house number two, if this was your chart, this would be like, oh my God, your Venus is retrograding in the house of love, the house of love and finances and money and income. That's just a quick example of why it's important to see, to pay attention to the sign that the planet is in, the planet is Venus in the sign of Leo, and then you always check the house number, right? But you have to see the degrees. I kind of jumped. I went from Venus to Leo to the house number. But Venus, if we look at this chart as an example, if Venus were, let's pretend it goes back beyond five degrees. This house cusp line number two ends at five degrees. I mean, it technically begins at five, but prior to five degrees, anything earlier, like 526, 525, 524, and under would be technically in house number one. And that changes the meaning for your values. It then becomes about what I love and who I love and what do I value. First house would be myself, my body, and my appearance. Second house is my things that I own. What's mine, money in the bank, my values, my valuables, who I love, what I love. Could even be love as in desire, my partner type of stuff. Who or who is it that I, who am I crushing on this week or this week, last week, whatever week, whatever month, whatever the flavor of the year, who the hell knows. So Venus in Leo, uh, but Mars, this is what the video is kind of sort of focused on because this is the new thing. Things are different. Things are changing. We're thinking more about our stomach and our gut and our health and our well-being. Some of us may even begin new health routines, yoga, walking. You know, yoga, a Virgo is more about things that are holistic and more natural, holistic and more natural. It's the gut. It's the stomach. Connecting the mind to that, how our emotions and our mind really do have a a, a real effect in the in the tangible world in our physical body and us seeing that connection understanding that connection and mars says i'm not afraid i am brave damn it i'm gonna start something i want to be first matter of fact mars usually wants to be the first one out of a gate so it's usually in a rush and it usually you know mars can get us into trouble when it's not being when it's not pacing itself when it's like running for that goal line, right? It can get injured. Think about that. There's a lot of other people it's competing against that are also running for that same goal. 
Um, and if it hasn't trained properly and thought through the next steps, it can get into trouble. Well, Mars here is actually, you know, when we talk about health, Mars can inflame things. It can, because that's the nature of this planet. It's inflammatory, right? And so it's po it's possible there are things about your health where you're like, you know, I've been thinking of doing this one thing, and so I'm going to absolutely get on the ball and I'm going to do it. But it can also lead us to, you know, Mars is typically optimistic, fiery and optimistic, and it's supposed to be that leader. It's supposed to set the example. That's Mars. If you're a leader, you're supposed to be setting the example. And um, Earth, it's Virgo, it's Earth. So it's the planet Earth. And I. it's so fascinating because a buddy – a YouTube neighbor boondocking with Dennis who sponsors every starry night live every Saturday night. He, um, he did a video. I'm not sure what day he recorded it, but he up, he published it today and it was about the CCC. Does anybody know about the CCC within the United States, the civilian conservation Corps? Yeah. Dennis gives a nice little bit of history. He does a good job. He's, you know, he's, he's reading from a book he has. He's doing a raffle, matter of fact, or something. I don't know what he's doing, but some sort of a contest. Anyhow, um, he he's within the, the, the forest preserve and the state parks there in Texas, uh, South Texas, by the way, on the Gulf Shores or, or on the Gulf of Mexico, Gulf Shores. Yeah. Anyway, so he talks about the Civilian Conservation Corps, and that is so Virgo. That is work within the earth and doing the tasks and the projects and gardening and, and what did the civilian conservation Corps do? Right. And just that time in our history in the thirties, very interesting time. And this, and it was so relevant when, you know, cause I'm the astrology geek. When he put up that video, I started grinning cause you know, I'm thinking, Oh my God, like that's Mars and Virgo. Like the energy shows up if we can see how to connect those dots. Cause you could take, Mars and write those things down. The civilian, Mars itself was born for war. It's typically a soldier. And the Civilian Conservation Corps, it was almost, you were, you were, it was a government program, but it was like you were enlisted. And I don't want to say within the armed forces, but you absolutely were enlisted within the government like forestry, forestry force, right? So, this was all at the beginning stages of that. So my words might be a little different than what they're called now, but go check out the history. Really cool, really fascinating. And so that starts and kicks off our week of July 10th. Now, what else is happening? What's cool is on this day, we've got the moon in fiery Aries. So all about starting something very optimistic because Mars rules Aries. So our emotions and our family and, and mom and home and and just like being very active, even being very active and having an optimistic outlook. So this tells us because the moon is about to leave Aries, it leaves once it hits 30 degrees and it moves, it moves a degree every two hours. So, and every 48 hours, the moon is in a brand new sign. So this tells us that for this week, we know the moon is going to be moving then into Taurus. It'll spend two, two and a half days there roughly. Right. And then it's going to go into Gemini. Right, right, right. And then it's going to go into cancer. So that's a quick view of where the moon is going to be. And we know on Monday, July 17th, we're going to have a new moon and it's going to be in the sign of cancer. And there's already videos up on the channel. Go watch that. But it will be over here right about the 24, whoops, right about the 20. 4, 25, 26, 27 degree mark. And look, Mercury is at 29 right now today in the sign of cancer at a critical degree. And it's in cancer, which is home and family could be the housing market. It's, it's, uh, yeah, it's the news because it's Mercury and Mercury is also like real estate and business and the markets that's Mercury. And so if it's in cancer, it's, it can be the housing market, it can be real estate, but likely Maybe there's a connection between the two, like the abundance of commercial real estate and the shortage of housing, right? Think about that. So Venus is going to be retrograding uh, pretty soon. And we also have, real quickly here, we also have the South Node and the North Node for this week. The South Node and the North Node, they're already at 048 in Scorpio and Taurus, and we're on a countdown. 
in seven days time, this node, because they always move backward, is going to be at 29 degrees in Libra. Yes, on the new moon next Monday. And that means the north node will go backwards, which means it moves into Aries on the 17th, Monday. Big days coming up. Yeah, lots of changes. July is a, is is an interesting month. We should expect new beginnings and lots of different ways and things switching up for sure. 29 degrees, the north node, your future in the sign of Aries, my body, my identity, who I am, what I am, where I am, what I do with my body, my body consciousness, the freedoms of my body, the freedom to be who I am as I am, and the safety of my body, the rights of my body. If it harms none, let it be done. Aries, very fiery, willing to fight. The North Node going into Aries, it is about the future of our freedoms, the future of our rights, the future of our body autonomy, the future of my identity and my right to exist right here, right now, exactly as I am. So. I hope you enjoyed this little segment of what's going on this week, and I will see you in the next video. Comment below. Bye-bye.